advanced scouting and completely decoding a team's signals are uh, again, two different things like yeah. sending someone to the game kind of is what it is. I do believe that it seems like at least in my read of the room, it seems like the filming of the signals is where this is all yeah. going awry. Like it, I, see, I never knew that you couldn't go to an opponent's game. Like, I don't see what the big yeah, difference is crazy to me. Yeah. Like what's the difference between going to a game and just turning on the tape and watching it? Like you're, you're going to get the same thing. That's not an issue to me. It is. Yes. Physically picking up a phone. And they supposedly there is evidence of, of and, and recordings out there of these said people holding their phone in a direction that was geared towards a future opponent's bench. So say that you're Ohio State game, that person was holding a phone up and it was directed at the Ohio State bench the entire time. And make all the assumptions you want. We kind of know what 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 they were doing. They were they were gonna get the signals. They're going to take it back. They're going to study it. They're going to set the plan. They're going to create a sheet that says, hey, this signal means this, 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 and this. You know, mirror it up with when they go back and watch the film. Like, that's where the line was crossed. Well, I have no issue with someone going to a game. Shit, my bye week, I went to the Georgia Tech game. So hopefully I'm not getting myself in trouble here. You didn't go to the Georgia Tech game to scout. You were trying to fuck Atlanta chicks or something, no, dude. I yeah. I mean, Georgia Tech girls? No. Yeah, I guess no. that's actually kind of true. No. There's a lot more dudes. That I went to the about. game. I wanted to see it was our bye week. It was before the Tech game the next week. You I went casually to the game to went to a Georgia Tech game when you were an active college athlete on the bye week? That seems insane. There is nowhere else I wanted to be less in college during the bye week than Atlanta. at a college football Listen, game. We had, is that, we, went, we had fun. It was an afternoon game. Then we went out afterwards. Okay, so, exactly. That's kind of my entire point. Aaron, I still yes. went to the game. I still went <laughs> yeah. to the Georgia Tech game. You weren't sitting here actually scouting. You were that worried I about was Georgia watching. Tech, What do you think dude? I'm doing there? I think you're fucking chilling, drinking beer, watching a little football with they the boys, getting ready to go the to the stadium. bar afterwards. There's no beer in the stadium. I was oh, watching the true. game. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Um, no, Greg, players do not have mics in their helmet, which we'll get to because that just kind of yeah. shuts all this down. Anyway, let's back up. Let's back up because we just kind of dove into this all midstream here at the beginning of the show, and some people may not know the details here. Uh, so, hey, exactly. Greg, sorry, Greg, Greg, no. Greg in the chat says, Aaron, were you starting at this point? Yes, I was starting. This was post. Auburn 2010 we had the bye week in between that I went to the Georgia Tech game before we played Georgia Tech the following week I guess Georgia Tech was kind of frisky back then those are the Paul Johnson days yeah. uh maybe you were kind of worried about them I suppose um okay so there is a staffer at Michigan a cat named Connor Stallions and he is the one that is at the center of uh this entire fiasco uh, his resume is fascinating. He's a former captain in the Marine Corps. And it's funny because if you look at his LinkedIn bio, uh, what it reads, Aaron, is he attempts to, quote, employ Marine Corps philosophies and tactics into the sport of football regarding strategies and staffing, recruiting, scouting, intelligence, planning, and mm. more. Under the skills section of his LinkedIn bio, it says, quote, identifying the opponent's most likely course of action and most dangerous course of action, and then identifying and exploiting critical vulnerabilities and centers of gravity in the opponent scouting. I, I need this guy on my team. Hell That's yeah. what I'm saying. Hell first yeah. Off, first off, I love. Great hire. Yes. Going to a Marine Corps captain to do this is, is actually genius. Um, and you know, providing a job for veteran as well is, is pretty chill, but anyway, so, so quite literally in his LinkedIn bio, some, some stuff that is pretty much saying exactly what he's doing. Uh, Pete Thamel would tweet that, um, they have evidence that, uh, he bought tickets for more than 30 games mm -hmm. at 11 big 10 schools over the past three years. Um, and that at least one school is said to have surveillance footage of him in his seat or a person in the seat that he purchased filming the sideline uh, the entire game on a cell phone. Not um, sketchy. Some other bits of information here. He never bought tickets to a game involving Michigan. It was only ever future Michigan opponents. And this last week, he had purchased tickets on both sides of the stadium for Penn State, Ohio State. Oh, I wonder why. And guess what? Those tickets went un used um mm -hmm. and when did the story break 
right before last mm. week. And then if none of this is yet enough to make you believe that he probably, or that this is what exactly was going on. Here is a fascinating video that just dropped. And uh, I apologize. This comes from Adam King, who is a reporter out of Columbus. Uh, this is their footage from channel 10 up there. This comes from Adam King. Watch this video right here. Wow. They had Ohio State signals nailed, mapped mm. out, figured out to a T. Um, so mission accomplished. Again, the only question now is because I think it's beyond you know doubt that this they're oh, yeah. do this. The only question now is how serious this and what is the punishment? Well, when is the punishment too, and then when is it gonna happen? Like when is it like, realistically with the NCAA? Oh, no, not, like, not what, this year, not this yeah, year. Yeah, like does it does it does this really matter right now? Does this does this I think people want to know, like, is this going to hurt Michigan in their run right now to be, as of right now, like, this team was built to win a championship this year. And, and and we'll see what the team looks like next year. But I think for Michigan fans, the thing is, like, maybe you got caught, but is it going to cost you a natty? Probably not this year. So I think that's the first thing that people need to realize. Like, there's not going to be a punishment doled out anytime soon that's going to affect this football team this year and their quest to win national championship. Um, well, and that's kind of interesting, though, uh, Aaron, because really, if I'm Jim Harbaugh, uh, winning a national championship may be your way out of this. And what I mean by that is, like, you want to become too big to fail, right? Uh, Bill Self in Kansas being investigated by the NCAA. During the investigation, he wins a national championship. Are you really going to go out there and take that away? Are you really going to go shut that down? It's kind of like how... Uh, back in Roman times, right? If you were consul, you uh, could not be, uh, you like couldn't have legal charges brought against you essentially, right? So there were times where like Caesar or others, in order to avoid the charges or avoid jail time, they had to win the consulship. Like mm -hmm. they had to get too big to fail. So yeah, if Michigan wins mm -hmm. a natty, can you really see the NCAA like stepping in then and yeah, and, and really putting down on Harbaugh and taking it away? I don't, I don't think so. I don't think Nobody they can take it away. Retroactively, actively change a national championship. No. Well, they took away Reggie Bush's Heisman Trophy. That was a different time though, because now that move looks dumb as hell and well, it does look dumb as hell. I, I agree. Like I don't think you can. I think Michigan would just kind of like laugh at them and say, "Screw you! You ain't taking this damn trophy from our trophy case." Like, sorry, too late. We won the natty screw off and, and who knows where the NCAA is going to be in a year from now anyway. So I, I, maybe they self-impose another two game, three game, four game suspension for Jim Harbaugh where he sits out, you know, three, four cupcakes and, and it's a slap on the wrist. But I just don't think the NCAA has any, any real power anymore to make major decisions that affect a football team. <laughs> and especially a team right. to, to like you allude to that is as powerful as Michigan. And that is one of the favorites to win a national championship. So that's why I'm like kind of torn. Like all this stuff is funny. It's it's interesting to talk about, but will anything truly get done that is one well, meaningful and two in a timely fashion? And I just it's hard for me to believe it will. So here's the deal, though. Vito Perella in the chat's right. The other Big Ten schools turn them into, and they're pissed, right? And so when you're a conference leader and you have the entire rest of your conference, including a big school like Ohio State angry at you like you almost do have to react you have to do something and i keep going back to that greg shiano there's a greg shiano video from the halftime interview um of the Rutgers michigan game where you can hear the anger in shiano's voice he's like basically referenced something that he can't really talk about and he's just talking about something not right is going on out there and then jeremy wyatt in the chat brings up a very good point he says interesting time frame of the spy gate Harbaugh went from maybe getting fired to 30 games later being the best coach ever and absolutely killing the spread. Aaron, have you seen the numbers on pre-Stallions to post-Stallions Harbaugh record? The College Football subreddit had this up here today. Check this oh, out. Oh, it has to be crazy good. So in 2020, Jim Harbaugh goes two and four, caps a six-year run where Michigan is 47 and 22. Uh, allegedly three years ago is when the sign stealing, uh, plan went into play and the three years since going 47 to 22, Michigan has gone 33 and three, their conference record specifically from 34 and 16 to 22 and one. 
And then, so it's a 34 and 16 to 22 and one. And of course they can most easily scout the conference opponents where maybe this gets even sketchier is they lose to a TCU team that they could not have scouted their signals because they would have never guessed in a million years that they would be playing TCU in the playoff. True. I mean, mm. it, again, correlation does not equal causation necessarily, but sometimes it's sketchy. Can you, it can make you look pretty fucking bad. And that's a pretty bad a, correlating depend, factor. It, it, it is. But Michigan, Michigan talent wise has gotten better over the past few years too. Like this is, this is a, I would say the most talented team the past two years that Jim has had during his tenure at Michigan. It's like that, that's part of it. Yes. But it, it all boils down to it. They knew what they were doing. Like there's no, there's no discussion about this. Like it, there's not a matter of, did it happen? Did it not happen? Was it intentional? Was it not intentional? All that the discussion needs to be going forward is, is, is it punishable? And what's the, the timeline of it all? And, and for Jim too, is this the moment of, Hey, we, we, we win a natty and then I dart to the NFL and I don't even give a damn move on. Like, is this the final stroll for him too? Uh, I, yeah, I'm not, I, 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 I don't know. I don't care about the Jim Harbaugh to NFL conversation. Like I, that, I mean, we have it yearly. Saying, like, it's like, like, just like, like, is this enough no, for I him to like move on? I well, And, and, and I can't remember who else in the chat was saying it earlier, but, um, but also, Jim's had his run-ins with the NCAA recently, right? Mm -hmm. He 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 got in trouble for some stuff during COVID. Now that that was all kind of just minor bullshit that I would be pissed yeah. about too if they were trying to come after me for. Uh, and then he kind of shot back and started talking about how hey, the NCAA needs to start giving players part of this TV revenue and part of this playoff revenue. You know, they make all this money. Why aren't the players seeing some of that? Which probably pissed him off more. We've seen an NCAA that's more a bit more petty and vindictive under Charlie mm -hmm. Baker. Remember under Mark Emmert, they had just yeah. become kind of there, but I think about them finger wagging UNC a little bit ago, and I could see them being a little, you know, having a bit of a hard on for Jim. Uh, but again, are you really going to go after him that hard, Aaron, if mm -hmm. he goes 15 and 0 and wins the natty? Mm -mm. You know, are, are, mm -mm. are you going to try to ruin the fabric of your sport or call into question the fabric of your sport? If uh, maybe their hand is forced, I don't know. We'll mm -hmm. see. Uh, Nick with a ten dollars super chat. Jim says he would get a tattoo if they go fifteen and zero. Uh, yeah, I saw that. I, I think the like other question too is: it's not just NCAA, but if 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 all the Big Ten presidents and athletic directors and head coaches come together, could the Big Ten do something discipline wise? That's what I'm saying. It feels like the Big Ten has to act even yeah. more than NCAA does because their members are pissed. Yes, I think that's the first domino that falls. Like if the Big Ten goes to the NCAA and them themselves as a governing body say, Hey, NCAA, we've done either our own investigation and we've talked to coaches and we've, we've come to the conclusion that this is what we suggest should happen. I think the NCAA at that point would have to act and act a little bit faster. I will. Uh, yeah, I would acknowledge them as champions if they won. I don't care. I think I look, I, I am someone who, um, you know, the Patriots at Spygate, we still call them champions. If you want to punish the Astros, sure. I mean, we didn't take yeah, the, the Astros. Astros. World Series. I think, yeah. I, I mean, look, I think that it's actually, there's definitely a fucked up part of me that kind of like, I really don't, I'm not yeah. even mad. I'm impressed. You know, <laughs> I mean, they, they, it's like Baxter, you ate the whole wheel of cheese. Like it's good shit, dude. You, you, you created a pretty bad, you got this badass former Marine captain to straight up, like do some real ass recon and intelligence mm. work on the opponents. Like, Okay, if you're not cheating, you're not trying, right? It's, it's kind of that old idea. Hey, can we just get some damn mics in the headsets, please? Yeah, just get some yeah. mics in the headsets. Let's just but let's... but you know what you do then? Then you go after the 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 hacker types mm. out of the Marines, right? Then you go after your 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 real recon guys, your tech guys, and you just start intercepting. It can't be hard to intercept a radio signal. No. Like it, it, it can't be hard at all. But but yeah, I mean that's the other part about this. If you get headset mics. The, the power five can afford it now. What the fuck are we doing? Get headset mics and just never worry about this again because you don't have to signal anymore.